Hi everybody, this is Jeff from Rick Robotics, and today I'm testing and reviewing this feature-packed Tronxy XY2 3D printer. I'd like to start off by thanking Tronxy for reaching out to me and asking me to review this printer. And while they did help me to make this review possible, I also wanted to make it clear that all of my opinions in this review are completely my own and not encouraged by any outside influences. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get started. Assembling the XY2 is incredibly simple, so I actually took it all back apart again to make a simplified tutorial of the build. The XY2 comes in four major parts, the Y axis and base, the X and Z axis with the extruder pre-mounted on the X carriage, the control unit, and the power supply. It also comes with a cleverly simple filament rack that looks and works great on this machine. The kit also provides a tool set containing four Allen wrenches, two screwdrivers, a wrench and a spatula for removing parts. I thought this tool looked a bit excessive for part removal, but it turns out to be quite a necessity. The power cord and USB cable, an SD card and adapter, screws, washers, zip ties, an extra Bowden coupling, and assembly instructions, as well as about 50 grams of this purple sample filament to get you started are also included in this package. The instructions, as well as a few other goodies, such as a test model, are also found on the SD card. We begin by putting a lock washer on each of the M5 25mm screws and attaching the Z section to the base. We then attach the control box to the base using the bolt nuts on the control box. This can be mounted in a couple of spots, but I put mine as close to the front of the machine as possible. The power supply mounts with two M3 25mm screws to the opposite side of the printer. Be sure that the bottom screw is in far enough to clear the Z carriage on this side in order to avoid a collision with itself. With the frame together, we can add the filament holder. This uses bolt nuts to mount the top of the frame as well. All this left is our wiring. The connections are labeled really well and most are keyed specifically for their mate connector so this part is hard to get wrong. The only thing to do is match the labels and plug them in. Routing the wire is a bit more challenging but with a bit of creativity it's not so hard to get everything looking alright. I decided to tuck some of those loose wires into the existing conduits and zip tie them shut. I also put a bit of a bend in around the back corner to relieve a bit of stress from the wires. Finally, we can apply the build surface to the heat bed. I'm not sure what Tronxy's calling this material, but it's similar to build tech and is a vast improvement from the painter's tape that came on my P802. Just peel off that protective film from the heat bed. Oh, I love the feeling of removing these. And also the sticker backing from the surface. Line them up square and apply it to the heat bed. Boom, done. The first time you heat up your build plate, you'll want to re-smooth the surface since it does try to buckle a bit the first time it gets warm. Now we're ready to start printing. Well, in my case, I ran into a small problem right away. It wouldn't power up. So after a bit of investigating, I discovered that the power leads were wired backwards, but after a quick switching of the leads, I was ready to try again. I went through the menu a bit to get an idea of the features and such and decided to test the auto leveling feature first. My bed came pretty level from the factory, so I decided not to mess with it just yet. I wanted to start with the G-code provided on the SD card, the Tronxy Cube Cylinder Test Box. It seemed to auto level itself just fine, but then basically drove itself into the build plate, causing a nozzle side burn. I killed the power and reset the print, and this time it decided to print in the corner but still below the build plate, creating yet another burn hole. I cleaned it and attempted to repair the surface as well as possible, because I don't have a replacement for that just yet. I determined the problem was the Z offset, so I changed the settings in the menu and gave it another shot. Thankfully, that solved the problem, and it ended up getting a pretty good result. I printed a test cube and a benchy that both turned out pretty well. Then I went to printing eggs. I figured this would be a good time to stock up for Easter, and they're also easy to scale and quick to print in about an hour each. I got a little layer separation a few times, but temperature adjustments seem to correct this pretty well. 
I also wanted to test the tolerance and the build volume, so I went with this amazing Eiffel Tower I found on Thingiverse. I linked this in the description if you wanted to try to print one for yourself. I scaled it up 200% to make it 250 millimeters tall, and I printed it without supports but with a wrap. I was really happy with how this came out. It's a little grainy in some of the finer spots and had a small failure in this spot here. But overall, I'm very pleased with how this turned out. With a couple of slight adjustments, this could be made even better. To slice my models for the XY2, I tested three different slicers. I used Cura, which is my go-to slicing program, which worked out the best for making fine adjustments to my print settings. I also used the slicer program from Repetier Host, which can also be used to control the XY2 from a laptop or PC. I was anxious to test the Troncy software as well, which is pretty easy to use and seems to be a bit of a combination of Repetier Host and Cura. It seems to be in the early stages of development, but it's effective and has quite a unique feature the others don't. When you slice your model in the Troncy software and send it to the XY2, the screen shows the model is printing. Neat! The XY2 has an automatic filament loading function and a runout detection sensor that beeps when it's out of filament and pauses the print. The filament takes a bit of time to load, but the shortened bone tube makes this process a bit shorter. The only problem I ran into here is the Bowden coupling would sometimes block the filament from initially passing through to the tube. The easiest fix for this was to simply loosen the coupler a tiny bit, and I haven't seen the problem since. In addition to the runout detector, the XY2 has a print recovery feature that will resume your print if it loses power. I tested this by simply yanking out the cord from the socket to kill the power. Not surprisingly, this did the trick. When I restored power, I was greeted with this screen asking if I wanted to pick up where I left off. I tested this three times, marking the interruption points each time. Everything stayed pretty square, but left a few blobs from oozing after shutdown. Maybe a bit of retraction before restarting the print would help prevent this? I'm really happy these features were added here though. I've lost some good prints because of power failures and filament running out. Alright, so what do I think about this printer and what are my recommendations? Well, uh, first of all, it is a vast improvement over the P802 models, which came with an acrylic frame and uh, about 150 to 200 parts that you had to put together. And this is only about four parts. It takes about 20 minutes to assemble. The frame is much sturdier. Handling it, lifting it, moving it, everything just feels a lot better about this frame. I think that that was designed very well. And they definitely did the two big things that... I had complained about with the P802, and I'm very happy about that. I am not sure if they actually took uh, my personal advice on it, but I, I'm happy to see that these improvements took place. And that was upgrading the building surface to this uh, build tack style. I, I probably shouldn't call it that, but this this surface, it almost sticks too well. And like I said, uh, using this is kind of scary because you, you really have to jam it under there and... Uh, pop it off and it kind of comes off in one big chunk but it's all right once you get used to it you kind of get the hang of it and that's that's good that the printing really stays on that it's so much better than the painters tape now, as far as the power supply goes I'm uh, much more impressed with that because this is clearly a much higher quality power supply than the P802s came with it has the power switch and the removable cord both things that I I tried to improve in my upgrades video for the P802 series. It has a recovery unit, so if it stops, it'll restart your print, and I think that that's really a great feature to have. Um, the the runout sensor, I have just a bit of a concern with. Now, I like the runout sensor because if there's no filament, it will stop, but there's no way to really tell if it's uh, just jamming or something like that. If you have filament in there, it's going to believe that it has uh, good filament running through constantly. So there's no movement detection in there. The control box is just really neat. I, I like the uh, intuitive menu that it comes with. It's pretty easy to figure out. It took about two minutes to go through everything and figure it out and know where everything is. So that's really neat. I like the graphic interface and that even feels a lot better than the buttons. It could be a bit more responsive, but 
besides that, I, I like what they've done with it, and I think that they're going to improve continuously on that, especially with more firmware upgrades. I think that that will definitely see something that, that looks much more refined and even more pleasant to use. So that's definitely a plus too. The only thing that I'm really not super impressed with is the rollers here. Now, when you move the Z carriage up and down, either manually or with the machine, you hear this really horrid squeaking. And I've tried to fix it with uh, like garage door lubricant and with WD-40 and it just doesn't really seem to work. I've even tried loosening the rollers a little bit and I still get that squeaking noise. Now, I haven't really seen any quality concerns as far as that squeaking goes, but it is pretty annoying for what is otherwise a very quiet printer. I think the filament rack is a nice little addition too. I know a lot of printers come with those. I think this looks really good on it. It's very functional. So yeah, I'm going to give them a plus for that too. Now, about my recommendations. If you've purchased other printers before, this would be a great printer to add to your collection because it is relatively reliable, it's pretty quiet, and it has a nice build volume with 220 by 220 by 260 millimeters. So you really can't complain about that. Could this be improved? Yes, it could. Um, I think that, honestly, if they wanted to get this printer out to uh, first-time printer buyers, they would uh, maybe calibrate everything at the factory and then print a test piece and actually send that test piece that they had printed in the factory with them so that you could maybe match it up. I believe uh, some printer companies will do that as well. They'll give you a piece that's already been printed on your printer even though you have to assemble it. So maybe if it was uh, calibrated right off the bat, that would be an excellent start. I did have a few troubles right when I got started, as you saw earlier. Now, if you're going into buying this printer, if you knew right off the bat that all you needed to do is home the Z-axis and make sure that the build plate is level, which I probably should have done to begin with, I just didn't set the Z-axis, I think you'll, you'd be fine and you'd probably end up getting with a great print right off the bat. I unfortunately didn't, but that doesn't sway me from saying that I do like this printer because I, I think it's actually really nice and I've been printing a lot of stuff. I get kind of carried away with these tags. The only other thing that I really not quite like so much, um, and this is just a personal thing, but these, these feet under here, uh, they left some black rings on this table here when I tried to move it the first time. So uh, maybe go with a, a non-marking rubber for the, the next iteration of feet that you put on this. For the price, uh, I think it's, it's definitely in the top tier of that price range, which is just under $300. So would I recommend this printer to you guys? Well, it's kind of a yes and a no at the same time. Like I said, I, I love this printer. I think it's great for people like me who've had a little bit of printing experience and don't mind mucking around with some print settings and trying to find out what really works best. If this is your very, very first printer and you really haven't had any 3D printing experience before, um, you may want to get some experience just so you know how to, how to make some adjustments first or when you feel comfortable tweaking uh, your print settings a little bit. But otherwise, this isn't really a bad printer. And I think with just a few more adjustments on Chauncey's behalf, this could make an excellent starter printer as well. In fact, I may even consider donating this printer to a school that I work with. They're interested in 3D printing, so I'd like to test this out with them and see what they think about it. All right, guys, that's all that I have for today. I hope that some of you guys found this helpful. If you did, please give me a like and consider sharing this video and subscribing to my channel. Your feedback is super important to me, so please leave me a message in the comments. I read everything that I see. Thank you guys all so much for watching. That is all for today. We'll see you next time.